Subaru is known for, well, two things actually, boxer engines and an all-wheel drive system, pioneered in their WRC cars. Now, this in turn has made their overall image rough and tough and quite outdoorsy actually, since all of their crossovers carry the all-wheel drive system. Now, the Crosstrek, formerly known as the XV, obviously looks like it has what it takes to drive on the road less traveled. But we're here to answer two very specific questions. Number one is that, does it actually have what it takes to be your daily drive? So then we'll look at the exterior, the updated exterior, the interior and its comfort, just exactly how practical the cargo space can be. Then obviously we'll take it out for a drive and find out just exactly the performance and fuel efficiency of the automobile. And after finding out all of that, we want to know the answer to the second question, which is, does it have what it takes to stand out in a very crowded crossover market? Let's find out together on this episode of Behind the Wheel. Are you looking to compare prices for your brand new car? Well then, visit autodeal.com.ph, select the car that you want, and choose to request for a quote from our network of over 500 official dealer partners nationwide. Within minutes, you'll start receiving offers from the dealers you've selected. All that's left is for you to select the deal that's best for you. Get the best deal on Autodeal. Now, I did say that it does sit in a crowded market because there's really a lot to choose from with varying price points. Let's start with the model that we have here today, which is the Subaru Crosstrek S Eyesight that comes in at 2,018,000 Philippine pesos. Now, one of the closer competitors to this would be the Mazda CX-30 all-wheel drive, which comes in at a million nine hundred and ninety thousand Philippine pesos. Now, if you were to forego the all-wheel drive system, another similar car would be the Peugeot 2008, which sits at just one million seven hundred and fifty thousand Philippine pesos. If you input these three into autodeal.com.ph using our Comparo tool, you'll get a more detailed look of how their specs match up to one another. Now, other crossovers in similar size would be like the Ford Territory, the Toyota Corolla Cross, the Honda HRV, that's just to mention some, and then there are obviously the Chinese options that you could go with. If you'd like to see videos on all of these cars, we do have reviews on them on our channel. We have new videos almost every week, and we create them just for you. So please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Now, having mentioned all of those automobiles, where exactly does the Crosstrek stand? Let's begin with the exterior. You've got a decent sized grille, very sharp, sharper than ever before features, including your DRLs and your projector headlamps, your cornering lights and your fog lamps found down below. The one thing that I'd like to point out, which you probably already see on screen, is the number or rather the amount of plastic that you find on the front clip. Now, that's a pretty big departure from making the car look premium and closer to its price point of over 2 million Philippine pesos, but, like I said, it is a very outdoorsy automobile, so you really won't get scared dinging this car at all when you try to get off-roadish kind of a thing. And besides, if you do, the fix is like that. The sharpness also continues with the claw-like LED tail lamps that would make, well, Larry the Lobster blush. Plastic cladding all around really bring home that rugged feel. You find a lot of it, like I said, up front, but there's also around on the fenders and the rear as well. You've got roof rails up on top, which means top loading is an option. And then you've got wheels in the size of 18s. Now, they look good, but I actually prefer the previous wheels on the previous XV, which we reviewed quite some time ago, actually. And when I say quite some time, I actually mean like five years ago. And five years ago, Jack was still sucking his thumb and then switching it with the other one. Ugh. It's got a healthy 220 millimeters of ground clearance, which is one of the highest in the segment. In fact, it's got the same ground clearance as that of a Mazda CX-9. 
It's really great for getting around high, very tall speed bumps and obviously light flooding inside the city. Now overall, the evolution of the XV into this Crosstrek is actually quite good. The design is still very, very distinct and you can't deny that it's also a very handsome looking automobile. Then there's the fact of this color. I mean, it's not exactly WRX blue, but it does remind me of the pristine beaches that you would only see from the beautiful islands in Palawan. Which, by the way, we actually have a drive off a Nissan automobile in Palawan itself. I tell you, I can link almost anything I say to videos that we've done because we really have a lot of videos. Anyway, the links are somewhere down below. We drove in Palawan, you get it. Jack's laughing behind the camera right now. He can't get enough of it. <sighs> Jeez, Jack, how long are your legs, man? When you get inside the Subaru, the first thing that I noticed was definitely how comfortable the seats are. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. They're very, very comfortable. And then, my goodness, your view. You have a very, very unimpeded view of the road. It's great. The windshield is slanted well. The A-pillars are not big at all. And then you've got quarter window spot to add to the fact that the uh, A-pillars are already very tiny. Wow, it's just you really can see the road. Probably better than the eyesight of this car. No, maybe not. Plus, uh, the side mirrors are not mounted. Obviously, where the quarter windows are, they're mounted on the side of the automobile and away. So it's really... Wow, very, very bright. Lot of light coming in. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to turn the engine on and get the aircon started because Milagro, it's actually a warm day today. Okay, so in front of me is the steering wheel, a non flat bottom steering wheel, much like I'm going to turn the aircon on, much like the Outback. You've got your buttons on the steering wheel, um, then you've got your analog gauges, which flank a digital trip computer in the center. With the analog gauges, I don't mind it. I think it actually looks very good. Could be a little bit dated for some people, but for me, it's a Subaru. I like these analog gauges. Um, in the center, you've got something of a talking point between Jack and I, a very, very large screen. I'm talking more than 11 inches, comparable to that of even the Everest. That's how big this screen is. And it's well used because all your functions are inside. However, Jack and I did note that it's not as premium looking as it could be because the icons are actually quite large. They could have been a little bit smaller. They could have done better with the, uh, the whole pane of, of um, the, the display. But all your functions are there nonetheless. And then what flank it on either side are your audio controls, which you can get to immediately. Now, there are no immediate air controls, physical air controls, but I did argue that when you start the automobile, the air controls are perpetually on the screen, so you can get to them all the time, even though that the screen can get a bit laggy at times, but it functions well. Underneath that, you've got charging points in the form of a Type C and a Type A, and a wireless charging pad, which is available to you right there, which is great. And then if you need more power, there's also a 12 volt socket found here. Other things inside the automobile, you've got two cup holders here, which can hold quite tall bottles, not very large, but tall bottles nonetheless. And then bottle holders on either side. Then you've got a cubby hole that is actually quite deep found in the center. However, there are some points that I'm not too sure about. This is not nitpicking. It's just something that you'd expect from a car at this price point. Number one is that when you put stuff inside the box here in the center, it kind of rattles pretty loud because there's no pad at the bottom. It's just plastic. Now, I don't know if it's because this automobile didn't come with one and you normally get one when you buy a car, but this one, there isn't. That's one. Second is that there are a lot of textures inside the automobile on the dashboard nonetheless. Yes, great, which is, it's nice to see in great angles, but there's this part here, which is, well, it's fall carbon fiber. And when I say fall carbon fiber, it's actually more plastic than anything else. And it's not so pretty. Last but not the least, this is the Subaru Crosstrek EyeSight, which means it's got three eyes, three over here. But when you pop this sucker into reverse, you only get a reverse camera. You don't get a 360. 
three eyes and no three. Come on, man. At this price point, I would have expected that at the very least. Before we do go out on the drive, I want to show you the rear seats first, very, very quickly. How do you turn this off? I'll leave it on because it's a warm day. Um, the second row, comfortable as well. Yes, seats are not as plush as they are up front in terms of give, but it's obviously going to be the same material. The leg room is decent for me behind my driving position and the headroom is uh, good as well. When you put Jack here in this exact same spot, the leg room gets tighter a little bit and the headroom also, but it's still definitely enough for him. He's still comfortable as he explained to me. Toys back here include charging points in the form of what you get up front, you also get back here. You get a 3 ampere and a 2.4 ampere, both type C and type A. You have bottle holders on either door, a center armrest with cup holders as well. It may not be large enough to carry Jack's ridiculous compensation for his manhood, but wow. you can carry smaller bottles even on the door itself. And then because this is a very safe automobile, it's a Subaru, you obviously have Isofix anchor ports found on both sides. Now, space for individuals back here, if you are, let's say for example, two adults, it wouldn't be an issue. If you have a third adult, that's when it becomes sort of tight because there is a tunnel in the center. If you are looking for an automobile with a bit more space, uh, you might want to consider looking at, and we have videos of, the Ford Territory. Because for some strange reason, the amount of space that car has in the back, it's amazing. I don't know where they pull it out from. It's like a rabbit from a hat. There is a bit of well, bad news for the passengers back here, though, because we found out while Jack was driving a couple of his friends, he and a passenger up front were freezing their butts off. But the folks back here were just, you know, kind of warm and uncomfortable. And they asked for the air to be turned up because there are unfortunately no air vents for the passengers back here. Now, that's not the only bad news. There is a wee bit more. The cargo hold as it is, isn't very, very big. You're only gonna be looking at 291 liters of space because a lot of it is occupied by the full size spare found underneath. If you're looking for a car with a lot more cargo, I suggest the Corolla Cross actually, because that thing has got like over 450 liters of space, almost 150 more than this guy. But it's not all bad news because if you do remove the tonneau, you will be able to fit the bike buy-in box back here and even close this properly with it barely touching the glass. But then when you fold the second row, which is really cool because it's really, really flat, you will be able to fit up to four bike buy-in boxes out here. So that is actually very, very good. But as it is, not so good. You kind of wish you had a little bit more space, but it's not all bad news because if let's say for example, you were to hang out back here, there are actually cup holders here on either side that you can put your beverages down while you watch the sunset out in the outback, like a beer or something. There's more too. Vents that carry the air from the wheel well up and out over the side of the car. I'm not sure how well that does for performance, but hey, at least it looks very cool. Then there's the fact that the bumpers on this automobile are so high, both here at the back and up front, that you never have to worry about making sayad when you're coming out of, let's say, a driveway that's really, really sharp, or when you're in a parking lot. You don't have to worry about those tire bumpers at all, which is great for drivers that don't really care like Jack or newbie drivers like my son. Why do you have to bring me into this? Because you know you drive that way. And lastly, well, I already showed you the three cameras that are uh, available here inside the automobile, but that's basically the eyesight system. And what we're gonna do is go on a drive because I wanna show you what those guys are capable of. Subaru's eyesight technology is one of the best things really about this Crosstrek. See, it's much more intuitive and adaptive than most of the adaptive cruise controls that you will find in other automobiles. Sure, they have it. It's just that, well, this one feels much more closer to that of you driving it itself. 
for instance, I have it activated right now at 55 kilometers per hour, but I'm only traveling at 27, 28 kilometers per hour because the automobile in front of me is, well, traveling at that speed. Now there's a motorcycle that has kind of cut in front and the car actually um, compensates for the space in between. Now, as another motorcycle has cut me off, what is wrong with me today? Or let me say to everybody else. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that it sort of like rebounds and starts accelerating much faster and I guess a little bit more aggressive than the other systems out there, making you really feel like it wants to keep up with the traffic. I say this because, well, you do know that when you drive in Metro Manila, the proximity that you drive in is actually much closer than anybody in any other country that I know of. And if you don't drive that way, sometimes you kind of lose your place, sort of. Here, it makes you really feel like that there is a person driving rather than the autonomousness of the car. No, it's not autonomous by any means, but I'm just saying that it's very intuitive and I like how, well, just smart it is. And although right now we are a bit of somewhat open road, if you can even call it that, but when you are stuck in traffic with this system on, it's actually very, very good. Again, more intuitive than most of the low speed follow uh, cruise controls that you have out there. And it holds, or rather it can activate even at very low speeds. For instance, you can activate this even when you're traveling at 10 kilometers per hour. You don't need to exceed 30 kilometers per hour for it to activate. You can just turn it on right then. And of course, turning the system off completely, all you have to do is tap on the brakes. There is a tad of disconnection with the automobile when it comes to the NVH of the car. Disconnection because, well, the exterior of the automobile has this rough and tough exterior on it and you expect a little bit of noise, but inside, it's like being in an asylum that has padded walls around you. It's just so ridiculously quiet in here. Even the uneven road that we are on right now, which is the Skyway, I, I'm on the rightmost lane. I know that when your right two tires are on that particular patch as you're traveling as I am now at 70 kilometers per hour, it's supposed to be noisy, but it's not. Hmm. And earlier we saw a plane pass by and I didn't hear that thing either. Wow, that's really strange. Good, but strange. I'm supposed to hear a sort of like a gnawing sound. Kind of like Jack when he wakes up from a bad dream, looking for his teddy bear. Given that you do have 220 millimeters of ground clearance, comparable, like I mentioned, to a CX-9, the ride is very compliant, very comfortable, as you'd expect. But that height, regardless of the all-wheel drive system, does give you a little bit of body roll when you're taking it at speed around corners. Now, speaking of speed, up front, you are powered by a two-liter, four-cylinder gasoline engine, which is mated to a CVT that produces 154 horses and 196 newton meters of torque. Now, it's by no means gargantuan, but it will definitely get the car going whenever you need such as now. That doesn't really feel like a CVT because there is a bite to it. I like it. Maybe we don't speed on the Skyway because I heard it's expensive to speed here. It's not that quick, but there's definitely a push that you feel, or a pull rather, however it is that you want to describe it, when you do floor the accelerator. Again, it's not immediate because it is after all a CVT, but it's more than enough definitely to get you going. If you're looking for something a little bit more exciting, something with a little bit more, let's say, bite, why don't you try the HRV Turbo? Because that thing is basically a Civic RS on stilts. <laughs> now, as for its fuel efficiency, on an open highway, you can do about 19 and a half kilometers per liter. Inside the city, and I'm talking when it's really nice to you, like on a Sunday, and for some strange reason, all the lights are green all of a sudden, and nobody's getting in your way, you can do about 12 and a half kilometers per liter. But when it's really bad, and I do mean bad, and I'm talking FIBA plus raining plus Friday kind of a thing, buti na lang, walang ang sale, you're doing roughly about six and a half kilometers per liter. That kind of hurts, but then you do also realize that that's really, really bad traffic. If, however, fuel efficiency is a top priority of yours, 
then you might want to look at the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid because that is actually quite fuel efficient and we proved it. We even drove it to Baguio, one of Jack's most favorite trips. Does it hurt when I remind you about Baguio? Yeah, I was like, oh, so close but yet so far. <laughs> the all-wheel drive system of this car is definitely great for gravel, for snow, for sand, for mud, for when the tarmac is like really, really wet and you're going up twisty. Keeping you on that road is very, very good. However, I'm willing to bet that there's a good chance that most buyers of this automobile will never actually use it for mud or grass or whatnot. However, it's not a sin to have it and use it inside the city because for all intents and purposes, this thing is really great inside the city. Your view is absolutely unimpeded thanks to the quarter windows. The suspension is very good. The comfort is very good. The seats are actually very good. The technology of the eyesight is really great as we proved it to you. However, there is just one little problem. Actually, it's kind of a big problem. On its own, it's a great crossover. The interior is nice and it's well built. The technology you find inside is actually also very good. The safety and the eyesight really work well. And then there's the fact that the car drives really, really well. And plus, it's very comfortable too. But if you zoom out, it's kind of painful when you realize that this automobile is a hair over 2 million Philippine pesos. Because at that price point, you're already dabbling with cars that are, well, quite literally larger. For instance, you could get yourself a 2.5 liter all-wheel drive system in the form of a Mazda CX-5. And then to go the other route, you could also get yourself a 1.6 liter diesel in the form of a CRV for the same price, and that is seven seats. However, I will say that if money isn't an object and you really know what you're getting into with the Crosstrek, I can guarantee that if you spend that money on this automobile, you will definitely not regret it. And with that said, if you are ready to buy, try the Get Quote button. It's absolutely free, which will bring you that much closer to all the dealers that will carry this particular automobile and that much closer to your next car. This episode of Behind the Wheel was shot on location at Ortigas Estates, Circle of Verde. For more information, visit the links in the description below.